We have demonstrated according to the scriptures that even if people are dead in sins and trespasses or are persecuting the church, it will not stop the power of God to heal them, deliver them of oppression of the devil, or receive a miracle. Jesus said, I tell you of a truth. Many widows were in Israel in the days of Elijah when the heaven was shut up three years and six months, when great famine was throughout all the land, save unto Sarepta, a city of Sidon, unto a woman that was a widow. Luke 4 verse 25 to 26. So Elijah performed a miracle of food multiplication for a widow of Sidon who was dead in sins and trespasses, alien to the commonwealth of Israel, and a stranger from the covenants of promise, without hope in the midst of the famine, and without God in this world. Ephesians 2 verse 12 in Jesus' time on earth, in his physical body, we also have the woman of Canaan, whose daughter was demon-possessed in Matthew 15, verse 22 to 28. She also came to Jesus, not being in the covenant of Israel, and yet Jesus cast the demon out of her daughter. People will say, I think even though I'm a born-again Christian, my unbelief and my sins can stop the power of God, so that the people I pray for do not receive their miracle, and I myself do not receive my miracle. Now, if the sins of the people you are ministering to cannot stop the power of God according to the Scriptures, what makes you think that your sins and unbelief can stop the power of God? Now, understand me clearly. I am not giving anybody a license to sin. He or she who practiced sin belongs to the devil. 1 John 3 verse 8 If you are overcome by a particular sin, you are slave to that sin and the devil behind that sin. Read the Bible study on the power of confession and you will have a better understanding of why God does not want born-again Christians to keep on sinning. When we sin, our conscience accuses us and we no longer have confidence toward God that he will answer our prayers. So the devil is after our confidence to make us ineffective in the preaching and demonstration of the gospel. That is why Jesus, when he prayed for us before going through his passion, he explained to us, They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them, set them apart from the world, through your truth, thy word is truth. Christians want to be effective in their soul winning and demonstration of the power of God, but they are still living in the same sins like the unsaved. It will not work properly. They need the word of God explained to them rightly, as we do succinctly in these my weekly milk letters, so that they will know who they are in Christ and how they are to be set apart from the ways of the world. As you have sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. Jesus sends every born-again believer to go and preach the gospel of the kingdom of God, to make disciples, not mere converts, to heal the sick, to cast out devils, to cleanse lepers and to raise the dead. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Jesus knew that he could not just talk the talk and not walk the walk, telling people do what I tell you to do, but do not do what I do. It does not work. There comes a time when we will stop living just for ourselves, but also for the sake of the people around us. Because the only way they will know God is through us, and we are making disciples. Our life is a seed that we sow into other people's lives. Just like Jesus sowed his life into our life, Jesus' life was a tree of righteousness, a planting of the Lord. The seed of his life which he sowed in his disciples was also that incorruptible seed of righteousness. That incorruptible seed grew in the life of his disciples and they also became a tree of righteousness, a planting of the Lord. Your life is that tree that is casting seeds into the hearts of all the people you are discipling. Either you are a tree of lawlessness, the planting of the devil, or a tree of righteousness, the planting of the Lord. The Lord God in Genesis says, Every tree reproduces of its own kind. 
Your disciples will watch your life and become like you. So if you and I are not representing Jesus, who was sent by God correctly, they will also do the same thing. Now they pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. John 17 verse 16 to 20 So please, when you stand before Jesus, never say that Jerry condoned our sins. I never did, and I never will. But like John says, my little children, these things are right unto you that you sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. 1 John 2 verse 1 if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 1 John 1 verse 9 Even though God will restore a backsliding Christian and use him mightily, sin always leaves scars. Samson never recovered his sight after they had put out his eyes. He now needed a young man to supervise his movement. Judges 16. When you fall into sexual immoralities as a minister of the gospel, even when you are restored, you will still be under supervision and accountability to other ministers, even younger ministers in the faith than you, for nobody trusts your whereabouts anymore. You need to rebuild that trust and earn that trust. It'll no longer be automatic and some people will never trust you with a single word of your mouth again their whole life, though they once trusted you. My prayer is that we will all be a tree of righteousness, the planting of the Lord. You shall know them, born-again Christians, by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree brings forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree brings forth evil fruit. If you are born again, you are a tree of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, and you will practice righteousness. But if you are not born again, you are a tree of lawlessness, the planting of the devil, and you will practice sin, which is lawlessness. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that brings not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Matthew 7 verse 16 to 19 Having hammered home the way God hates sin, but so loves sinners and loves righteousness, and then honours the righteous who practice righteousness. As he said to Samuel, For those who honour me I will honour, and those who despise me shall be lightly esteemed. 1 Samuel 2 verse 30 now let us look at examples in the Bible on how the sins, lies and unbelief of a person who is in a covenant with God does not stop the power of God or the promise of God to come to pass. Some examples of how your sin or disobedience cannot stop the power of God to perform a miracle for the people. The people in the wilderness were asking for water to drink, and the first time God spoke to Moses commanding him to strike the rock, and water will come out for the people to drink. But the second time, God said to Moses, Do not strike the rock, but only speak to the rock, and water will come out of the rock. But Moses, in anger, struck the rock. So Moses disobeyed God's command, which is sin. But God still performed that miracle for the people, because God had compassion on the people, so he overlooked the sin of Moses and performed the miracle for the people. Numbers 20 But we know that that mistake cost Moses a lot, because of that mistake he did not enter the promised land. It was the same thing for Samson. He was living in sexual sin, but God wanted to save his people Israel from the oppression of the Philistines, and Samson performed miracles in the name of the Lord to deliver Israel from their oppressor. But as for Samson himself, who refused to repent of those sexual sins, it cost him a lot. He fell into the hands of his enemies, and they put out his eyes, and he died in the prime of his life. It was not God's plan that Samson should die the young, but he would not repent of his sexual immoralities. But before his death, Samson repented, 
Judges 13 to Judges 16. Moses and Samson are not our example when it comes to how they disobeyed God or in the case of Samson practiced sin, but we should look at their faith in God, not in themselves, for they are listed as heroes of faith in Hebrews 11. Jesus is our ultimate example of faith and of how we should not practice sin. God used imperfect people to carry out his perfect plan of salvation, so no matter what your life has been, you can take courage that God will use you as well and get your life together according to the written word of God. Let us go back to Abimelech and Abraham in Genesis 20. Sarah and Abraham lied to Abimelech that they were brother and sister. This is Abraham, the friend of God, telling lies because he feared for his life. As it is written, Abraham said of Sarah his wife, She is my sister. Genesis 20 verse 2 God said to Abimelech, Indeed you are a dead man because of the woman whom you have taken, for she is a man's wife. Abimelech did not come near Sarah, and he said, Lord, will you slay a righteous nation also? Did he, Abraham your friend the prophet, not say to me, She is my sister? And she, Sarah, even she herself said, He is my brother. In the integrity of my heart and innocence of my hands, I have done this. Genesis 20, verse 4 to 5. So you see, Abraham and Sarah lied to Abimelech. Abimelech was innocent, but yet him and his household became barren. God asked Abraham who lied to Abimelech to go and pray for the healing of Abimelech and his house. And when Abraham prayed for him and his household, they were healed. Abraham was not a perfect man. Once in a while, because of the fear of men, he would lie about who he truly was. Abraham did not have the advantage that you and I have. We have the Bible to tell us what God will do if we stand on his word. You and I have the promise of God that says, I will never leave you nor forsake you, so that we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Hebrews 13, verse 5 to 6. Pilate thought he was the one who had power to kill Jesus or to set him free. Pilate said to Jesus, Do you not speak to me? Do you not know that I have authority to crucify you, and I have authority to release you? Jesus answered, You could have no authority against me unless it were given to you from above, by my Father God. Therefore, he who delivered me to you has the greatest sin. John 19 verse 10 to 11 I remember when I came back to the Lord, when he healed my backsliding and loved me freely. I was ashamed to tell people about my faith, especially when I met a French-speaking person. For one strange reason that I cannot explain, I thought I had more ties with French-speaking people than English-speaking people. The opinion of French-speaking people mattered to me, but I did not care whatsoever about what the English-speaking people thought about me and my Jesus. So when French-speaking people would talk to me, I would even lie that I was not a Christian. One of my best friends at that time, who was a French-speaking person, said to me, whenever people go to the UK, they either become radical Muslims or radical Christians, and it seems like you, Jerry, have become a radical Christian. No, I am not a radical Christian, but a normal Christian according to the Bible. But God was still healing sick people through my hands, and I cried out to God to help me because I was so overly concerned with what French-speaking people said or thought about me. And God helped me and gave me an opportunity not to be ashamed again of the gospel of Jesus and who I am in Christ. One day, as I was going out of my house, I met a friend of mine. We went to high school together with him and his wife. We had not seen each other in twelve years, so they invited me to theirs. I said to God, when I go there, the first thing I will do is to tell them of my life since we left high school and all the mistakes I did in my life, as I explained in the Bible study of David's sexual sin exposed and how God saved me. 
I am now born again and even a minister of reconciliation. I went to their house and told them everything. They were so silent while I was speaking that I thought that they thought the worst things about me in their head. But at the end they glorified God because they had also been secret Christians and were backsliding. But when they were in Belgium a pastor gave them a prophecy that as they are going into the UK they will meet God there. And for them it was a confirmation of that prophecy and they rededicated their life to Christ. And now they are even studying the Ma Weekly Milk Bible Studies. Praise the Lord! Isaac also lied to Abimelech and the people of the land about Rebekah, his wife. He said she was my sister. Genesis 26, verse 6 to 8. But Abimelech had already had a bad experience with Abraham, the father of Isaac. He did not want to take any chance with Isaac. He observed Isaac and Rebekah closely. Then Abimelech called Isaac and said, Quite obviously she is your wife. So how could you say she is my sister? Isaac said, Because I said, Lest I die on account of her. Genesis 26 verse 9 Yet, in that same Genesis 26, where Isaac lied to everybody about his wife being his sister, God blessed him. Isaac sowed in that land and reaped a hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. Genesis 26 verse 12 in Genesis 26 verse 2 to 5 and Genesis 26 24 to 25, God appeared to Isaac and spoke to him. It seems like the law of Isaac could not stop God from speaking to him and pronouncing a blessing over him. Isaac was not perfect, but he obeyed God to stay in the land of Gerah of the Philistines. Abraham was not perfect, but he obeyed God to leave his country and go to a land that the Lord would show him. God will not give up on us because we are struggling with a sin. He will help us to get our life together. I sometimes talk with a pastor friend who tells me, I have not heard from the Lord for a month. I must be doing something bad. That is why God is not speaking to me. I have confessed all my sins, but he is still not speaking to me. I have told God, show me my hidden sins so that I can confess them and then you will be able to speak through me and use me. That pastor is sin conscious, not righteous conscious. God still spoke to Abraham and Isaac after they had lied about their wife being their sister. God still used Abraham to heal Abimelech and his household. Jacob also deceived his brother Esau and lied to his father Isaac to get the blessing. Genesis 27. Yet in Genesis 28, when Jacob was running away for his life, God spoke to him in a dream and gave him wonderful promises. Jacob dreamed, and behold, a ladder was set up on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven, and behold, the angels of God were ascending and descending on it, and behold, Jehovah stood above it and said, I am Jehovah, the God of Abraham, your father and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie I will give to you and to your seed. And your seed shall be like the dust of the earth, and you shall spread abroad to the west, and to the east, and to the north, and to the south. And in you and in your seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And behold, I am with you, and I will keep you in every place where you go, and will bring you again into this land. For I will not leave you until I have done that which I have spoken of to you. And Jacob awakened from his sleep, and he said, Surely Jehovah is in this place, and I did not know. And he was afraid, and said, How fearful is this place! This is nothing but the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. Genesis 28 verse 12 to 17 God did not condone the law of Abraham, neither did he condone the law of Isaac, nor did he condone the lie and deception of Jacob, nor did he condone the law of Jerry, but their sins did not stop God from speaking to them and giving them great revelations and blessing them or using them to heal the sick. If God dealt with any of us according to our sins and rewarded us according to our transgressions, None of us would be qualified to receive the manifestations of the promises of God or to be used by Him. That is why Paul tells you, Then, 
Where is the boasting? It is excluded. Through what law? Of works? No, but through the law of faith. Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the works of the law. Romans 3 verse 27 to 28 God will work with you as long as you have a willing heart to be transformed into the image of Christ and no longer be conformed to this world. God will work with you and through you. And we see Jacob when he came back from Laban's house. He was a different man, even a transformed man. That is what Paul explains, for if there be first a willing mind, it is accepted according to that a man has, and not according to that he has not. 2 Corinthians 8 verse 12 That is why a new born again Christian easily receives their miracles, because they know they do not deserve it. It is based on the mercies of God, not on their good deed. They never present any of their good works as a reason why they should be healed, delivered, prospered, etc. But they have a willing heart and willing mind to turn their life around, forsake their evil ways and become doers of the word of God, so that they will bring pleasure to the heart of their heavenly Father. They know that they have not been tithing for a single day in their life, and if God were to prosper them financially or bail them out financially based on their giving, they would not qualify at all. They have never tithed, and in the church there are people who have been there for 40 years and have tithed all their Christian life. But that new born-again Christian says only, God, I believe it is your will to prosper me, and that I should be in health too, as my soul prospers. 3 John 1-2 I know the grace, unmerited favour, not a merited favour in the divine empowerment of our Lord Jesus Christ, that, though he was rich, yet for my sake he became poor, that I through his poverty might be rich. 2 Corinthians 8 verse 9 so I rely on your grace because I do not merit any of your goodness or divine empowerment to prosper me and bail me out financially. And as you prosper me, Lord, from this day forward, even the little I have, I will follow your biblical prosperity plan. The same thing for healing. A new born-again Christian will say in his heart, Jesus, you commanded every born-again Christian to preach the gospel, cast out devils, cleanse lepers, heal the sick and raise the dead. I have not been born again for more than an hour, but I am willing to go and just share the testimony of my salvation, to lay hands on people, and I know it has nothing to do with me, but with Christ Jesus, who by his stripes healed them. 1 Peter 2 verse 24 So I am willing to go. Use me. I do not know all the scriptures yet. I do not even know how to pray yet as I ought to. But your Holy Spirit who dwells in me will teach me. Romans 8 verse 26 to 27 I have never fasted yet, but I am willing to learn. Teach me, Lord. But someone who's been in Christianity a long time will be telling God, Use me to preach and heal because I read my Bible every day. I fast twice a week. I pray one hour every day. I pay my tithe, etc. For the Lord sees not as man sees. For man looks on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. 1 Samuel 16 verse 7 it is all about Jesus and his finished work on the cross. All those things we ought to have done them. Jesus says, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin, and have omitted the weightier matters of the Lord, justice, mercy and faith. These ought you to have done, and not to leave the other undone. Matthew 23 verse 23 Yes, we ought always to pay our tithe. We ought to pray and not lose heart or give up. Luke 18 verse 1 We ought to fast for the right motive. Mark 2 verse 18 to 20 We ought to read our Bible and meditate on the word of God and not be ignorant of the will of God. Joshua 1 verse 8 
all these things the scribes and Pharisees were excelling in, so they were presenting God their deeds of the law, their performance. But they forgot the weightier matters of the law in the eyes of God, first justice, second mercy, and third faith. 